in this video, dictionary comprehensions in Python. So what is a dictionary comprehension? Well, let's say we had a dictionary. In this case, I created one here called age dictionary, and we could do a dictionary comprehension and do something like KV for KV and HD dot items, right? So that's the syntax of a dictionary comprehension. We basically just made a copy, didn't do anything to it in that case, but you know, let's edit it and we could update our value. And now you'll see that the age for these individuals, the values in this um, dictionary have changed. And so we did that using a dictionary comprehension. So that's a dictionary comprehension. And before we get too deep into it, I wanted to take a step back and I thought a good place to start would be um, some documentation and looking at the PEP for dictionary comprehensions and the history of kind of how these things got into the language. So let me just clear our screen here, come back to our PEP, and you'll see that this was created in 2001 and dictionary comprehensions were added in Python version 2.7. We're not gonna spend too much time here, but what I wanted to show you was kind of the logic for how a dictionary comprehension got into the language. Um, it'll help your understanding, right? So basically they said there's two disadvantages of the old way. Um, and by the way, sorry, the old way is wrapping a dictionary around a list comprehension. So they used to have a list comprehension that would look like this. Um, and it's basically a list of tuples that's getting created. And what people would do is they would wrap dict around a list of tuples and that would kind of change it into a dictionary. And that's what people had to do prior to Python version 2.7. But now what we have is the dictionary comprehension and we can do the semantically equivalent thing uh, just like that using a dictionary comprehension. And so they said the reason for this is twofold. One, the first way was not super legible. And the second reason was because it forced the programmer to create an in-core list object first, which would be expensive. And expensive means in terms of efficiency. So they're basically saying that this one is way less efficient than this one. So we've kind of made the language more efficient and hopefully a little more readable as well. So this is our dictionary comprehension. And what's interesting about this one in particular is that our input is just a range. Our input is a list. It's not another dictionary. So that first example I showed you uh, with HD, if I can get that back. So that was um, already a dictionary. And so we basically manipulated a dictionary and changed it into a new dictionary. Um, but with this, we're not even starting with a dictionary. We're just starting with a list. So um, this might look a little bit complicated using the CHR built-in function here. Um, but basically you could just do I because you need, you need a key and a value for your dictionary. So you need to, so since we're only kind of going to have keys because we just have a list, we have to create the value out of something. So in this case, I'm going to make the key and the value the same, and we could try something else and make the value uh, multiply. Uh, we could try something else and uh, maybe wrap string around this number. So now we have, you know, numbers and strings. So basically we need to ensure that we are being explicit about our key value pairs that are going into this dictionary comprehension. So now hopefully you have an idea of what a dictionary comprehension is and how we can do it um, using sequences such as lists. And so the same type of thing um, would be just one, two, three, four, five and we can create dictionary comprehensions like that. Um, but I wanted to go into more detail of manipulating existing dictionaries and then creating new dictionaries out of that. And then in the process, we'll also look at using if else statements um, and using filtering as well. So if I can bring back that function I had just to make things easier on myself. So here we have our kind of normal uh, dictionary comprehension using a dictionary as an input. And you'll see that we need to use items here. If you don't use items, um, it is unable to unpack it. So make sure that if you are passing a dictionary, you're using dot items. 
And the reason for that is if you did hd.items, you can see how it's kind of pairing things together. And traditionally, a dictionary, when you iterate over a dictionary, it doesn't traditionally um, consider the values, it only considers the keys. So I'll show you what I mean. So you could do for i in, in hd um, print i. So what do you think is gonna get printed out here? You think it's gonna be the key value pairs or you think it's going to be just the keys? Well, it's going to be just the keys because again, like I said, dictionaries, when you iterate over them, um, it's really only iterating over the keys unless you're being specific about it. So that's why um, you can't just do it like that because you only have access to the key, you don't have access to the value. So we need to use items um, so that we have access to the key value pair. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. So now let's move on to some if else statements. So um, we have some, some people and they have different ages. So what if we said something like, um, we only want to return everyone over 40. So that would be a filter. So we could put that on the right side of our equation. So we could do um, if um, V greater than 40. So two guys are older than 40, Michael and Guido. So those are the only two that are getting passed. Of course, if we did 20, uh, we're gonna get everyone. And then of course, if we did 40, uh, we're filtering out all the values um, below that number. Cool, so that is using filtering and if statements. Now, a common one people ask a lot about is if else statements in a uh, dictionary comprehension and how to do the if else because it's a little bit tricky. So now let's look at doing if else statements inside our dictionary comprehension. So not just doing if statements to the right, not just doing filtering, but actually doing if else on the key value pairs. And the big kind of overarching idea you need to know is that you need to be doing these specific to the key or specific to the value. And what I mean is you need to kind of do like if else here, and then if you wanted to do something with the value, you'd have to do if else here. So you kind of have to operate on each one uh, distinctly and then ensure that you're kind of still having that key value um, format. So key value, boom, so that's our normal one. And what we could do is say something like, um, you know, if the dude's name is not Jack, uh, let's name him Brendan. So, so K, if K equals Jack, else Brendan. Okay, so hopefully that should work and we return Jack and Brendan. And there's only two values here because um, I guess four values got named to, to Brendan and then it just took the last one. So you see how John was 33, that was the last value and now Brendan is 33, so that's the last value. So that's one way you could do it. Another for the value is we could do something like that age 40 thing we did before. So you could say um, if V greater than 40, um, um, how about we could do old if V greater than 40, else young. And our issue here is just that I'm missing uh, the closing bracket, so make sure you have that. And we run this, and Jack is young, Michael's old, John is young, Guido's old. So you see how we change that value um, in a conditional. And if we want, we could even kind of throw these together. It's going to be a little nuts, but um, so here we're operating on our on our key, and then we'll also just operate on our value. So Jack is young, Brendan is young. You can see that we have two if else statements one for the key and one for the value. I know it might seem like there's a lot going on on the screen, but hopefully it seems pretty simple. Um, operate on the key and value separately, and it's also it's pretty helpful just to wrap things um, in some context. So you can do it here on the key value, and then you can also do it here on the value and here on the key. So hopefully, yeah, that still works fine. So you'll see, you'll see this quite often, just kind of wrapping the key value like that shouldn't have any um, real effect. And then here, I'm just trying to show you that you want to kind of think of the key and the value separately. You want to have both of them, but the conditional logic is only going to apply to one of them. 
Um, so that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, we could do um, the conditional logic on the if and then on the else, we can still kind of operate on it and change people's age. Um, so that's, I don't know, just trying to show you a couple different combinations of things you can do. So again, we've looked at if else statements, uh, we've looked at if filtering, um, we've looked at inputs as a dictionary, and then we also kind of looked at inputs such as a list or a range, things like that. So hopefully you have a general idea of a dictionary comprehension at this point. It's always going to return a dictionary, and it's a great way to create new dictionaries on the fly. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Peace.